Ricky Henderson. Well, he's having a big year. The Yankees went all out to get him. They gave up quite a bit to get this young man, and he has paid dividends. Well, he's really the key to their ball club. If you can keep him off the base, he is a sure bet to, uh, if he gets on, to attempt to steal. He's batting 322. He has 23 home runs and 67 runs batted in. Very high for a leadoff man. Morris delivers a strike, and he's in front of Henderson. They play in rather close for him. Brookins about even with the bag. All the other infielders in a step or two. And the one strike pitch. That'll make it one and one. Henderson was at or near the top most of the summer in the batting championship, but Wade Boggs just pulled away from everybody. Henderson, Brett, and Boggs were all around 348, 350, 352 for about six weeks. And all of a sudden, Mr. Boggs got on a tear. Wade Boggs made a statement, uh, two hits a game will keep the doctor away, and that doctor happened to be George Brett. Yeah, <laughs> Dr. Brett, two hits will keep a lot of doctors away. Morris delivers, and he struck him out. Threw it right by him, and Ricky Henderson strikes out. That was not the split finger pitch either. Well, they feel that Jack is going to that split finger pitch too much, and uh, he has an excellent fastball, about 90, 91 miles an hour, and uh, he, they feel that he should use that a lot more, and that pitch happened to be out of strike zone. This is Ken Griffey, who's playing in left field tonight. They're platooning Griffey at the moment with Billy Sample. Billy plays against the left-handers, did last night against Tanana, and Griffey against the right-handers. One ball, no strikes. And the pitch from Morris. Jack is throwing hard. Atlanta got a couple, and they lead Cincinnati 2-0 in the fourth inning in Cincinnati. One ball, one strike, and a drive hit foul down the line and right. Boy, he hit that one a ton, but a long ways foul. One ball, two strikes. And the pitch. Struck him out. That's the split finger pitch. Went down in the dirt, and Griffey strikes out. So Jack Morris gets the first two on strikeouts. Number 23, Don Mattingly. First Number 23. Don Mattingly, the batter. He led the American League in batting last year and having another fine season. And could very well be the most valuable player in the league this year. He pops it foul. It should be out of play, even if they don't win it. Well, he plays in New York, and they have an awful lot to say about who is most valuable player. They always have. Normally, they go with a team uh, uh, who wins the pennant. But the Yankees have been in the race pretty much all year since Billy Martin got here. Pitch is over, but low, and it's one and one to Mattingly. He's batting 322. He has 195 base hits. And 30 home runs. Certainly MVP numbers. Sure is. 131 runs batted in, 30 home runs, 322 average. He got number 30 here last night, accounting for the lone Yankee run. It's ball two and strike one. And the pitch. 
Ball hit towards shortstop. Baker, nope, he's not going to get him. Ball hit the ground and scooted on Doug. Made a good pickup, but he was off balance and he had no chance to throw out Mattingly. Normally, this ball will take to high hop. You see the ball hit very hard. This is a hard infield, and Doug expecting the ball to stay up, and it stays down. He does a good job of fielding the ball, and then he had to correct himself, had no chance to get Mattingly. Will be scored as a single for Mattingly. He's at first with two outs, and the batter will be Dave Winfield. One ball, no strikes. You see Winfield, he does not like it when you pitch him inside. Tiger's been pretty successful by pitching him in there, too, and you have to. He has such long arms. You don't want those uh, arms to get extended at the plate, and he jumps into the ball. And a strike makes it one and one. He has 105 RBIs. I believe this is his fourth straight, straight year he's had 100 RBIs for the Yankees. He's been a very productive ball player since playing out his option in San Diego and coming over here. And he hits it in the gap in left center. This will go to the fence and will score a run. Mattingly comes in to score, and it's a 1-1 ball game. There's the swing of the big guy. Look at the level swing. He almost cuts down on the ball, and he hits a line drive in the gap. And, of course, here at Yankee Stadium, it's the deepest part of the ballpark. Ball goes all the way to the wall. No chance to get Mattingly at the plate. That's what you call crushing a baseball. He hit that one about as hard as you can hit one. It'll bring up Ron Hesse with a runner at second and two outs. This fellow's had a great year for the Yankees. 296 batting average with 13 home runs. And a pitch outside. And I think he's having it at the right time. George uh, Butch Weinecker, I understand, is playing out his option. And they may not be in too big of a hurry to sign Butch to a big contract. One ball, no strikes to Hasse. Where Mars is, I thought he was going down and talk to Winfield, but he's coming back now. Jack got the first two batters on strikes, no problems at all. An infield single to Mattingly and a double to Winfield. Got the run in. And it's ball two, no strikes to Hasse. Pretty hard to pitch around this guy with Don Baylor coming up next. He fouls this one back. Ball two, strike one. Yankee Stadium is a good ballpark for left-handed hitters, and the Yankees have always had their share of good left-handed hitters. 310 down the right field line. The power slide is only 353. Yogi Berra, Mickey Mantle, you name them, it goes on and on. Charlie Keller, ooh, he had a rip at it. Two and two to Hasse. Jack Morris trying to get him out in the first inning. Hasse waits on the 2-2 pitch. And he struck him out. Foul tipped it right into the middle of Parrish. They get a run on two hits, strand a man, and at the end of one, we're tied one apiece. Uh, 
Chet Lemon will lead it off for the Tigers. Simmons will follow, and then Tom Brookins. Each team scored a run in the first inning. Parrish drove in the run for the Tigers, and Dave Winfield doubled in the Yankee run. Chester Lemon batting at 264 with 16 home runs. And the first pitch from Joe Necro. Fly ball, right center field. Winfield backing up a couple of steps, and he has it. So Lemon is out on the first pitch, and the batter will be Nelson Simmons. Nelson Simmons. Nelly a switch hitter, and he'll bat left-handed against Necro. And Nelly has a career-high eight-game hitting streak on the line tonight. He takes it outside. Boston and Toronto are in the fourth inning. No score in Toronto. Blue Jays lead the Yankees by seven, and the magic number is six. And they've got to be pretty happy up in Toronto. There's a strike. One ball, one strike to Simmons. We're in the second inning in New York. One out, nobody on. And a pitch outside makes it ball two. They only had 16,000 plus here last night to see Phil Necro go for number 300. Looks like they might have more people than that tonight. For some reason, you would expect they would have had a big crowd last night. But for some reason, there seems to be more people here tonight. That's the last pitch. And Nelly, that's the one weakness Nelly has. He will swing at too many bad pitches. He takes a strike and knew it. He's out on strikes. It's the first strikeout for Necro. Out number two in the second inning. Looked like a slider. It didn't break like a knuckleball. It looked like a slider on the outside corner. There's Brookins with two outs, nobody on. Tommy with a 236 average takes a knuckleball in close. Tommy has six home runs and 40 runs batted in. Checks his swing ball too. Tommy made a play last night at third base with the bases loaded, nobody out, and it might have uh, been a game-winning play, even though the Tigers were ahead six nothing at that time. There's a foul tip. Yeah, he's had a bunch of those this year and that was a great one Baylor hit a line shot bases loaded nobody out and he just made a diving catch of it here's a fly ball to right easy play for Winfield and the inning is over Tigers go out one two three we go to the bottom of the second tied at one Here come the Yankees in the second inning. Don Baylor will lead it off, followed by Pagliarulo and Hudley. Big Don Baylor. This fellow has had a good career as an outfielder playing every day and then turned the designated hitter into just an outstanding career for him. The pitch to Baylor and he hits it hard to left field. Well, Baylor on the first pitch singles into left. The leadoff man is on and the batter will be Mike Pagliarulo. The spell has come to the front this year. Yankees started the season 
platooning at third base and uh, Pally Rulo was in the minors when they first started. I think he's going to eventually be a good power hitter for the Yankees here at Yankee Stadium. He hits it on the ground to third and it'll go foul. Would have been a tough play for Brookins. He hit it on the end of the bat. Tommy playing over in the hole a bit for him. And very wisely let it roll foul. Pally Arulo has 18 home runs and 59 runs batted in. They say he's doing things at third base that uh, Nettles was doing before he left here. An excellent fielding third baseman. One strike to Pally Arulo as Morris checks his runner. And a fly ball behind second base lemon coming hard he'll make the play he hit it on the end of the bat into shallow center field and the batter will be Rex Hudler Willie Randolph has been hurt for most of the past month in and out of the lineup and uh, this young fellow Rex Hudler has been getting a chance to play. He's an excellent fielding second baseman but does not hit the ball well at 171 batting average. He bunts and Marsh will have to go to first with it and he just does get him. It was a fine bunt it hit the ground and seemed to back up a bit and Morris had to hurry to make the play. Well, he deadens the ball at the end of the uh, of the end of the bat, but it goes towards the pitcher. Had that ball gone down the third baseline, I think he would have beaten it out for a base hit. Puts a runner at second with two outs, and the batter will be the shortstop, Bobby Meacham. Bobby's a switch hitter and takes it outside from Mars. 31 is that Steve for Toronto. It is Dave Steve going for the Blue Jays against Boston. Nothing nothing. Fourth inning in Toronto. One ball one strike to Bobby Meacham. We're in the second inning tied at one run apiece. Morris trying to fight him off with a runner at second and two outs. And the one one pitch. He pops it up in the shallow center. Lemon is there. And at the end of two we're still tied at one. Doug Baker will lead it off for the Tigers in the third inning. Baker then the top of the batting order Whitaker and Evans. A 1 1 ball game at the end of two. Doug Baker playing shortstop tonight in place of Trammell. Nothing wrong with Trammell. They're just giving him the night off. And a pitch outside to Baker. Doug Baker a switch batter batting left handed. And a base hit into center. He hit it on a line. And Baker is on with a solid base hit. It'll bring up Whitaker, who bounced to first base his first time up. Lou hit his 21st home run last night, and that's the most ever by a second baseman in Detroit history. Oh, the Yankees were needling Lou pretty good at the batting cage. Henderson came up. He said, uh, you broke a record. What kind of record? And then Willie Randolph said, did you tie a record or break a record? And uh, Lou, just give him that little boy grin, said, I think I broke it. <laughs> That'll make it 2-0 to Whitaker.
Ball two, no strikes, runner at first, nobody out. And they play in close at third base for Lou. Never seen a third baseman that close unless he really, truly believes the bunt's in order. And I don't think it is in order. He bunts the other way, I guess it was. Good play by Necro, too. Lou made a pretty good bunt, just not quite hard enough, and Necro, with good speed, gets off the mound. So that'll be a sacrifice. This is almost a perfect bunt, and I believe uh, Necro might have hurt his leg here. And uh, makes a good play. A little bit harder would have gotten by him, and the first baseman would have had to field the ball. I notice uh, as Joe was walking back to the mound, he was uh, feeling the back of his leg as if he might have uh, pulled a hamstring. Here's Darrell Evans, who had a single and was out trying to stretch it into a double his first time up. And a strike at the knees to Darrell. Doug Baker, the runner at second, one out. We're in the third inning. One ball, one strike. Darrell has 88 runs batted in. And a ball, ball two, strike one. We stand corrected on the Toronto pitcher. It's Jim Acker, number 31. Steve is number 37. Bruce Hurst, a left-hander for Boston. Here's a strike. Count goes even at two and two to Darrell. The 2-2 pitch. And he's going to bluff the runner back. Joe Necro is ready. And this one gets away and on to third goes Baker. That's the knuckleball. You got to be careful. Catcher has a big job and as Al Kaline pointed out to you Hassey has caught Phil Necro but he has not caught Joe Necro and there's a difference there even though they both throw knucklers. They will do different things. They're going to move the infield in with a runner at third, one out. Ball three, strike two to Darrell. And a foul. This will get out of play. Boy, he got it right in on his hands and almost popped him up. Well, when Joe was throwing real well with uh, Houston, he would throw a uh, slider. There's the uh, pitch that got away from the catcher. That has to be a pass ball. Uh, when he was throwing real well, got behind the count, he would throw a cut fastball, a ball acting very much like a slider, in on the fist of the left-handed batters. And he pops it up. This will not be deep enough to get the runner in. Griffey coming in behind shortstop. Oh, Darrell Evans is out on a pop-up, and it'll leave it up to Gibson to get the run in. Gibby had a walk his first time up and scored the Tigers lone run. Well you see the uh, the veteran pitcher that Joe Necro uh, is uh, he pitched the fastball in on the fist of Evans he hit him on the handle he fouled it back and Evans saying well he's going to pitch me inside the, the right hander goes outside and he had a very weak swing. So it's up to Gibby with a runner at third, two outs. Joe Necro ready. Oh, you see Hassey fighting that knuckleball? He says, I don't want one to get by now with Baker at third. I believe the toughest ball for the catcher to handle, I'm not sure, but the ball right in their eye. The ball that's coming high in the strike zone because the catcher puts the, the glove up in front of his face and the ball might go either way and bounce off the end. At least down low, he can follow the ball down in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the dirt.
One ball, one strike. He threw a fastball on that second pitch, and Hasse raced out to the mound as if to say, uh, I don't think we have our signal straight. Fastball misses, ball two. If Hasse had his way, he'd call for the fastball. Fastball, slider, anything but the knuckleball with a runner at third base. They might have decided, too, we'd rather pitch to Parrish. Even though Lance singled in a run his first time up. Ball three, strike one. And a drive that hit Necro right on the knee, and he's going to throw him out. Oh, I don't think he was going to pitch either. Oh, he was hit hard. That ball was headed for center field and hit Negro. It appeared to be around the knee. We'll look at it right here. Wham. And fell right at his feet and saved a run. We go to the bottom of the third, still tied at one. Well, they are serenading Phil Rizzuto here at the ballpark at the moment. It's happy birthday to this great Yankee ball player and longtime announcer here in New York. Here he is, Phil Rizzuto. Holy cow. Holy cow. Is his favorite saying. Top of the batting order for the Yankees, Ricky Henderson, Ken Griffey, and Don Mattingly. Well, there is nobody throwing in the Yankee bullpen, so we would have to assume that Joe Necro's all right, but he took a shot from Gibson. Here's a drive off the glove of Brookins. Boy, Tommy almost made a great play. Ball was hit hard. He went as high as he could and just got a piece of it. So Henderson is on with a leadoff hit, and the batter will be Griffey, who struck out his first time up. Change of pace is high. That's the fourth Yankee hit. They had two in the first inning when they scored a run. Baylor led off with a single in the second, and Henderson here in the third. They're in the fifth inning in Toronto. Still no score. Here goes the runner. Throw to second. Save. Stolen base for Henderson. Number 75 for the uh, outstanding base stealer. He has averaged. 82 that, stolen bases a year. That breaks the Yankees' all time record. Fritz Meisel had Meisel, I guess, uh, 74 in 1914. You know who Fritz Meisel is, don't you? No. That's Bob Meisel's father. Baltimore all sports right, writer. Right. Sure Good enough. buddy of yours. <laughs> They're going to give him the base. I think he took it. He said, I stole it. I want it. Bob Mazel is a sports writer in Detroit in uh, Baltimore, longtime sports writer. His father, Fritz Mazel, played for the Yankees for many years, and he held the all time base stealing record here in New York with 74 stolen bases. Now Henderson has 75. And he just reached down and took the base right out of the turf and says bring another one out here and somebody better hold him close he might go for 76 the 2 and 0 oh pitch to Griffey is a ball ball three Morris getting in a jam here in the third ball three no strikes.
Ken Griffey waiting on the three and zero pitch and he might jump all over it too. Nope he takes it. Ball three strike one. Griffey has 10 home runs and 66 runs batted in. And the 3 1 pitch. Ooh, it skips away and on to third goes Henderson. Looked like Jack was throwing the split finger pitch it hit in front of the plate and bounded away. So it'll be a walk to Griffey. A wild pitch enabling Henderson to go to third. It's what Henderson can do for a ball club. He singles, steals second, goes to third on a wild pitch, and he's there with nobody out. And that's the fifth, fifteenth wild pitch of the year for Jack Morris, and I'm sure that it has to be the, the high in the league. That's an awful, a lot of uh, wild pitches. Don Mattingly, the batter, he had an infield single his first time up. First and third with nobody out here in the third inning. And the pitch to Mattingly. This ball down the line, and it is fair ball into the corner. It's going to score two. Mattingly will hold with a double and the Yankees go out in front 3 1. Well, Mattingly just uses all parts of the ballpark. He had a home run here yesterday down the left field line. This time it's down the left field line very difficult place to play for the outfielder you can see how short it is it comes away from John Grubb Mattingly now has 133 runs batted in and the batter will be Dave Winfield. Still nobody out here in the third inning. A single, a walk, and a double. And the Yankees have two runs in. And a pitch low to Winfield. Philadelphia got two in the first inning at St. Louis, and the Dodgers got three in the first inning at Houston. Ball hit to Brookins. Winfield is out and they hold the runner at second. Tigers get the first out of the inning and the batter will be the catcher Ron Hassey. Hassey excuse me. I was going to say that double by Mattingly uh, is the most since Luke Eric had 47. It's quite a few years. Yeah, you got to go back to the middle 30s or earlier. Bill Shearer throwing in the Tiger bullpen. Here's a base hit into center field. It's going to get a run in. Ron Hassey hit the first pitch on a line into center, and it's a four to one ball game. Well, this ball was not hit hard, as you can see there on the end of the bat, and just loops over the head of Lou Whitaker. Chet Lemon has no chance to get the runner at home plate. That'll bring up Baylor, who had a base hit his first time up. Don Baylor was the leadoff man in the second inning. And he hits a liner into center. It's going to be caught by Lemon. Ooh, he hit it hard. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're watching Tigers 85. Now discover America with TV's Cosby family on the day of the season premiere. That's tomorrow afternoon at 4 here on Channel 4.
It's been a rather rocky third inning for Jack Morris. Two outs and the batter is Pally Arulo who flied to center his first time up. Mike Pagliarulo. And the one and oh pitch. A strike makes it one and one. That's Don Dickinger behind the plate tonight. Al Clark is at first base. Drew Coble at second. And our good buddy from Battle Creek, Mike Riley, is on at third base. Pitch outside. We have a young fan in Grand Rapids Al Peter Bachheim Peter Bachheim has been in a hospital he's nine years old he's out now we hope he's doing better and young man we're pulling for you we're pulling for you to get well so good luck to you Peter Bachheim up in Grand Rapids Michigan two and two to Pagliarulo. Yankees have scored three times this inning. They have a runner at first with two outs. Jack Morris is ready. And the pitch is high, makes it ball three. Full count to Pagliarulo, which means that Ron Hasse will be moving on the pitch. Three strike two. And a fly ball into center field. Backing up is Lemon. He's there and the inning is over. They get three on three hits and a walk. And at the end of three, the Yankees four and the Tigers one. will lead it off for the Tigers in the fourth inning followed by John Grubb and then Chet Lemon. 4-1 the Yankees in front. Tigers started the scoring in the first inning. Yankees tied it in the first. And then the Yankees erupted for three in the third inning. There's Parrish. He had a base hit drove in a run in the first inning. And a knuckleball in tight. They've got a dandy going in Toronto. No score in the fifth inning. Red Sox and the Blue Jays. Lance fouls it away. Milwaukee got a run. They lead Baltimore one nothing in the second inning. Cleveland beat Oakland seven to two. And they're getting underway in Texas. No score at the end of one. One ball, one strike to Parrish. And the pitch from Joe Necro. He hit it hard to third, but Pagliarulo picks it off. So Parrish is out to start the fourth inning, and the batter will be John Grubb. John well, Lance hits this ball hard. Good play by the third baseman. You see he's playing well back. I see Joe always looking over towards the Tiger dugout, and uh, I'm sure they're getting on him a little bit. Gibson hit a shot, and looked like uh, Joe might not come out, but he's out there. He's going for that win. Johnny Grubb bounced to second base his first time up. And the one and oh pitch. A strike makes it one and one. That's the knuckleball in low, ball two. Ball two, strike one. Don Dickinger calling the balls and strikes tonight. And a Fastball in tight. Three and one to John Grubb. 
He'll be followed by Chet Lemon. Tigers have really played long ball with the Yankees in the last four games. 15 home runs they've hit against the Yankees, including the three games in Detroit and the one here last night. Johnny Grubb is on with the walk, and the batter will be Lemon, who flied to right field his first time. Yeah, the Tigers have 192 home runs. That's second in the American League. The club record for home runs is 209. That was set in 1962. One strike to Lemon. Joe Necro got the inside corner with a fastball. Tigers got Chet Lemon in 1981. November of 81. He started the 82 season in a trade that sent Steve Kemp to the White Sox. Yeah, he's been a good, good player for the Tigers. He has played an outstanding center field. Strike two to Chet. He's going to have to fight that knuckleball off with a strike two count. You know what Joe Necro wants to throw. And he hits it on the ground up the middle, a base hit, and Grubb will hold it second. Chester bounces it through the middle into center field. And the Tigers have them at first and second with one out. This ground here in New York is almost like playing on AstroTurf. You see how high the ball bounces. It's a certainly uh, helps the hitters quite a bit. So Nelson Simmons has a chance. Two on one out Tigers trail by three. And a pitch outside to Nelly. Nelson's getting some valuable experience up here in the major leagues. I expect this fellow to be a good offensive player in the years to come. One ball, no strikes. And a strike makes it one and one. You see how they pitch him in this ballpark. Left-handed hitters, they try to keep it to the outside corner. As Al pointed out, it's only 310 down the line. Ball two. Two and one to Simmons. Pittsburgh has a five nothing lead in the sixth inning over Montreal. Nelson waiting on the two one pitch. And a drive into center field that's going to be caught by Henderson. Well, Simmons is out, second out of the inning, and it'll leave it up to Tom Brookins. Tommy flied to right field his first time up. Two on, two outs, and the Tigers trail by three. Pitch outside. A walk and a single puts Grubb at second, Lemon at first. Ball two, two and out to Brookins. Cardinals came back and got three, and they lead the Phillies three two. That's in the second inning. Tommy hits it on the ground to third. Pagliarulo, good play, and he got him. He bobbled the ball for a moment in his glove and still made the play to second. We go to the bottom of the fourth. The Yankees four and the Tigers one. Rex Hudler will lead it off for the Yankees in the fourth inning, followed by Bobby Meacham and then Ricky Henderson. Hudler bunted and was thrown out by Morris his first time at bat. 
pitches high. I talked to Jim Campbell today about his meeting with the commissioner of baseball and other club executives meeting with the commissioner. He said I could quote him on what was carried on at the meeting. The commissioner appointed a spokesman for each club to speak to each team to your own team and to deliver a letter to each player on that team from the commissioner in regard to the drug problem that baseball is facing at the moment. Jim of course was the Tiger spokesman. He told me that he delivered the letter last night to the players and and spoke to the team and he asked each of the players individually to take a drug test next year to agree to take a drug test three times one in spring training one in the middle of the season one at the end of the season and he said this is purely voluntary I'm quoting Jim Campbell now purely voluntary no results will be revealed to anybody here's a fly ball to center that'll be the first out of the inning and he said if anyone needs help it will be provided by the ball club and Mr. Campbell also pointed out that this is the same test that was conducted in the minor leagues this year and also taken by all office personnel of each club and the commissioner feels like it was a total success in the minor leagues and that this is vital to the continued success of this great game and the commissioner made it perfectly clear to everyone it's entirely voluntary and it's on a one to one basis you can agree to it or you can turn it down those that will take it will be given the test those that don't want it it's dropped simple as that but it's very vital to the success of baseball and the commissioner is going to pursue it that is from Mr. Jim Campbell I think it eventually will happen but I, I feel that uh, the players want it to go through the players association that's all the response I've been reading in the paper. But I don't see why not. I would want it if I were a ball player. I would want it. In today's game, yes, with all the yeah. innuendos and uh, not knowing exactly, you know, what's going on and what you read in the paper. I, if I were a player today, I would welcome it. Here's a strikeout. Meacham strikes out. Second out of the inning, and the batter will be Ricky Henderson, who started the rally in the third inning with a single. A single and a stolen base. Anytime this man singles to open an inning, it's almost like a two base hit. Well, baseball is going through some very crucial times at the moment in regard to drugs brought on by the revelations in Pittsburgh and the commissioner is committed to doing something about it. Ball two no strikes to Henderson. Ricky Henderson with a three twenty three batting average. Just set an all time Yankee record for Stealing bases here in New York, 75. There's a strike. Ball two, strike one. His best stolen base production, George Kill, 130 in 1962. That's what you call a ton of them. Foul ball off the mask of Perry. That's more than I had in my career. Is that the all time? Hi. What? <laughs> you told me, ask me anything you want. To. <laughs> ask me anything. You've told Chuck Wozniak and I that. I would make a, a, a guess that no, it was. No, I don't want any guess. <laughs> well, no. I can't tell you <laughs> honestly that I know. I think it is, too. I think it's the all time high. He broke Lou Brock's record. Here's one into the corner. This will be a base hit. And extra bases for Henderson. He heads for second. Yeah, I think Ty Cobb had the all time record along come a young man by the name of Lou Brock to break that and then along came a young man by the name of Ricky Henderson. And there'll be a man up in uh, St. Louis if he stays healthy might break his he will break it Vince Coleman if he stays healthy will. The only difference in Coleman and Henderson he is 
not as good a hitter and doesn't get on base nearly as much but if he ever does here's one into left center this ball is going to drop for a base hit and go all the way to the wall in the score comes Henderson and on to third with a triple is Griffey. Well, it looked like Jack was going to have an easy inning. He got the first two batters on fly balls to center. Two strikes on Henderson. He doubled and Griffey triples up the alley and left center. This is a big outfield and it's an awful burden on your center fielder. It's a big ballpark to have to roam out in center field. Five to one the Yankees lead and the batter is Mattingly who's had a single a double scored two and batted in two. And he fouls it away. Well they're happy in the Bronx tonight. They haven't had too much to cheer about lately. They lost eight in a row and fell seven behind the Blue Jays. Had a little turmoil in Baltimore this weekend with the manager but everything's fine tonight. Mattingly is out. They get a run in the inning. And at the end of four the Yankees five and the Tigers one. I just got the word from Bill White next door in the Yankee broadcast booth. Henderson is the all time single season leader. I was wondering where you were going. I thought you were ready to jump off. <laughs> I almost <laughs> fell out of the booth. <laughs> but I got the information. Send me on a mission and I'll get it. Doug Baker will lead it off for the Tigers. Baker had a single his first time up. Tigers have had a couple of chances against Necro. They scored in the first inning. They had a runner at third with one out in the third inning failed to score and had two on in the fourth two on with one out one strike to Baker and a ground ball to second Hudler over to first and there's one out we we'll bring up Whitaker who's 0 for 2 they did not give Lou credit for a sacrifice bunt his last time up even though he bunted Baker to second the official score ruled he was bunting for a base hit and they charged him with a time at bat. Necro delivers outside one ball to Whitaker. Lou has 21 home runs. All time high for a Tiger second baseman. 69 runs batted in. With a 282 batting average. One ball, two strikes. The Blue Jays got a run. They're playing in the sixth inning and they lead Boston one to nothing. Whitaker is out on strikes. Necro got the knuckleball over and Don Dinkinger calls him out. Take a look at it. There's a knuckleball. You can see there floating. From this angle looked like it might have been on the corner. Of course, it's tough to tell. Second strikeout for Necro. Necro looks good in the Yankee uniform, doesn't he? Looks thin. Well, he stays in good shape. Pitch outside. Well, he has a real good friend on the Detroit Tigers, Dave Bergman. Dave will be going down to Lakeland, Florida the first week in November. They do a lot of hunting and fishing together. 2-0 to Evans. Darrell had a single his first time up. Then he popped to the left fielder. Ball three. Ball three, no strikes. Mm -hmm. 
Ball four. He couldn't get it over to Darrell. So Evans is on with a walk. And the batter is Gibson, who has walked, scored a run, hit a shot off the leg of Nick Roy's last time up. Tigers had a runner at third with two outs when Gibby laced it through the middle and Necro knocked it down with his leg and threw him out. That's the knuckleball one strike to Gibson. I'm going to guess 17,000, maybe 18, 16, 17, 18,000 at the ballpark. Well, keep going. You got to get it right sooner or later. Well, thereabouts. Why don't you say anywhere from 10 to 25? <laughs> You'd be in pretty good shape. Well, there's nobody in the upper deck. Very few people in the upper deck. And this ballpark seats about 59,000, I think. Strike two to Gibson. Gibby takes it outside. Milwaukee got a, another run. They lead 2 0 over Baltimore. The 1 2 pitch. That'll make it 2 and 2. Well, Gibby could put the Tigers close with a long drive. He waits on the 2 2 pitch from Necro. <laughs> Had a good fastball and he got it in on his fist. Pittsburgh romping all over Montreal. 8 0 in the seventh inning. Have you noticed how much better Pittsburgh has played since they? Went to the kids. Sure. They got some guys up there that are uh, hungry and want to play. They've been glad to be in the big leagues. They beat the Mets two out of three over the last weekend. Played the Cardinals tough, lost a couple. And they're out in front of Montreal, eight nothing. Gibby fouls it away. They've got the Cardinals coming into Pittsburgh this weekend for three. Oh, Willie Horton. Talked to Willie a long time before the game today. I asked him how things are going, and he said, well, there's always something going on over here. <laughs> <laughs> he did say that. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Gibby pops it up. This ball is going to be some kind of trouble. Short stop. Did he catch it? I think he did. I think he caught it. Meacham was turned around completely and came back to the infield to get it. We go to the bottom of the fifth. It's still 5-1 Yankees. He's in the fifth inning. They lead the Tigers 5-1. Winfield will lead it off, followed by Hassey and then Baylor. Big Dave Winfield. Here's the last play. Al, this is a pretty good play. Good play. The wind, there's a slight breeze blowing towards the left field corner to the right field, and he just overruns the ball. That's an outstanding play. Most difficult play for an infielder run with his back to the infield. Winfield had a double in the first inning, batted in a run, and he bounced out his last time up. Well, the old baseball season is winding down to a close. Toronto has a seven game lead over the Yankees. You don't think the Yankees are going to catch them. Do no you? way. No way. No way. You're going to predict then that Toronto will win it in the East, the American League East. Here's a base hit into center. Winfield hit that one on the end of the bat and looped it into center field. In the American League West, California leads Kansas City by one half game starting play tonight. Now, what do you say? And I've said it all along. I like Kansas City. Okay, Kansas City and Toronto. In the American League, the Cardinals 
could lead by four at the end of this night. They had a three game lead starting play today over the Mets. The Mets lost in Chicago today and the Cardinals lead three two tonight. Who's going to win that. Well, I like St. Louis. In fact I think St. Louis will beat uh, beat the Dodgers and be and going to the, World in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You pick the Cardinals over the Dodgers. Cardinals in the World Series Toronto and the Yankees Toronto and uh, Kansas City. What are you going to say you're putting me on the spot all the time. <laughs> no, I just want oh, your you're really brave you expertise know that? here. I don't think Kansas City will beat Toronto in the playoff. I think Toronto will be in the World Series. That'll be great for that town. Oh tremendous for that great city and I think they'll be there. They got the best ball club. The only thing in a short series Kansas City can pitch you to death. They have some outstanding pitching. And they could get Saber Hagen in there twice in a five game. It's seven game now. They could get him in there twice or three times. But I still like Toronto. And I do like the Cardinals over the Dodgers. Here's a pop up on the infield. Weather wise you might better pick California and the Dodgers. World Series starts uh, October 18th. Could get a little cold up in Toronto. Here's Baylor who's had a single and lined to center field. He has hit the ball hard twice tonight. Pitches inside to Baylor. Minnesota got a run. They lead Texas 1 0 in the fourth inning. I think Minnesota has been a very disappointing ball club this year. After the finish they had last year, or in the race all year, everybody thought they might win it over there. There's a towering fly ball to left. Johnny Grubb moves in under it. That's the second out of the inning, and it'll bring up Mike Pagliarulo. It's a funny game. Uh, reputation Pagliarulo. means nothing in this game. Just because you have a good second half doesn't mean you're going to go on and win. You still have to go out and play hard and have good years, and uh, it's tough to come back and have good years back to back, just like the Tigers have proved from a year ago to this year. It is a puzzlement why you cannot repeat in baseball and nobody seems to repeat anymore. There goes Winfield and a big jump and Paris. I don't know what Paris was doing. He took his time and looked like he just aimed it down there as if to say I don't have a chance to throw him out. And he didn't either. He had a running start at first base and Lance just hey well I'm just go through with it. This ball hits him on the back of the head it looks like. Bump. Right in a coconut. Whoops. Yep, right there. Might have been where he was aiming the ball. Stolen base for Winfield. And they're going to walk Pagliarulo and picks to the second baseman, Hudler. With a 5 1 lead, I don't think Jack Morris expected Winfield to be running. And he you know what? I don't, get even, away. I don't even think Parrish cared whether he, he ran or not. He, he feels he has a much better chance getting this guy out than the possibility of Pagliarulo, Pagliarulo hitting a home run. Rex Hudler has bunted, thrown out by Morris, and flied to center field. Pitch is low to Hudler. Winfield's at second. Pagliarulo's at first with two outs. And a foul that'll be out of play. One ball, one strike.
Jack signaling in to Parrish. He wants to start over again with the signals. Oh, off the glove. Let's see if he can make the play. He does a good play by Whitaker. Hudler had it headed for center field. A line shot. Morris got his glove on it, and Whitaker did the rest. At the end of five, it's still the Yankees five and the Tigers one. Parrish will lit it off for the Tigers, followed by John Grubb and Chet Lemon. It's five to one, the Yankees. They got one in the first, three in the third, and one in the fourth. Tigers got a run in the first inning. Joe Necro's been tough. He's allowed the Tigers, but four hits, two of those came in the first inning. Since then, a single by Baker and a single by Lemon. It's been it. They've been talking to Joe every time he goes into the dugout, and his leg might be starting to bother him some, although there's nobody in the bullpen. It's a ball to Parrish. Cardinals got another run. They lead Philadelphia 4-2 at the end of three. Phillies jumped off to a 2-0 lead. They've got a chance to pick up some ground. The Mets lost to the Cubs today. Cubs got a run in the bottom of the ninth to win it 5-4. And it has not been a very good year for the Cubbies. At one time they had five starting pitchers on the disabled list. Parrish gets a walk. He's at first to start the sixth inning. And the batter will be John Grubb. I think they've asked the umpire now if they can come out and talk to him about his leg. The trainer's coming out. Joe, uh, after throwing those pitches, you can see he was short-arming the ball. He was afraid to follow through and land on the on his leg. There you hear the reaction of the crowd to Billy Martin as he comes out with a cast on his right arm and his uh, ribs taped. And his ribs taped. He has two broken ribs. They're going to bring in a new pitcher. They want Brian Fisher, big yeah. fella. Negro is going to leave, so that will allow Brian Fisher to uh, warm up and throw as much as he wants uh, when he gets to the pitcher's mound. Well, while there's a break in the action with a score of the Yankees five, the Tigers one, we'll pause for these messages. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Detroit Baseball Club and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any use or reproduction of this game without the written consent of the Detroit Baseball Club is prohibited. The announcers for these telecasts are selected by the Detroit Baseball Club and WDIV and compensated by WDIV. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. And of course, I guess they're not. But Billy Martin walks <laughs> off the field, and the people gave him a standing ovation. One thing, if you're a Yankee fan, there's always something to talk about, write about. And here's one guy they've been writing about a lot this year, Brian Fisher. And he has had a good year for uh, the Yankees this year. A record is 4-4, four and four, so that's not too great. But he has 13 saves. That's second to Rigetti. He has pitched in 53 games, and... Uh, he has a 2.48 earned run average, pit, pitched 94 innings, allowed just 77 hits and 32 runs. Came from the, uh, you mentioned, came from the Atlanta, Atlanta Ball Club. They had him in the farm system down there, Al, and um, brought him up to the big club this spring and traded him to the Yankees for Rick Cerrone, the catcher. It's been a steal for this ball club. Cerrone did not figure into the plans here at all, and. He hasn't done that much for Atlanta. And there's been talk that I've been reading in the paper where Rigetti uh, next year will go back into the starting rotation because they feel they can rely on this young man to be the stopper uh, next year. Of course, it's very difficult to have good years back to back, and it might be a little different if he is that number one man coming in every day. But he has a good arm. He throws the ball very, very hard. 
Well, as Al pointed out, he will uh, get as much time as he needs, and when there's an injury to the pitcher, new man coming in gets all the time he requires. And Fisher had not been throwing in the bullpen. He'd thrown about two pitches when Billy Martin went out to the mound and decided to make the change. So maybe a half dozen pitches in the bullpen. That's been it. And so far, all he's done is beat Hassey up pretty good. He's hit him with a couple, bounced him up there. And Hassey wants him to hurry up and get loose. Johnny Sane was very outspoken when they let this young man go for Cerrone. Of course, uh, anytime John, Johnny Sane was the minor league pitching instructor for the Braves, and anytime he has anything to do with his youngsters, he wants to have the say so, and he didn't want to let him go. Well, it's obvious anytime you have an, an arm like uh, like Fisher does, and he's a young man, and, uh, you, you can't teach anybody how to throw the ball hard. You might be able to teach them how to spin the ball, sink it a little bit, uh, and help their control, but there's no way you can teach anybody how to throw the ball hard, just like you can't teach anybody how to run faster. You either can run or you can't. And whenever you have somebody like this who can throw hard, you stay with them a lot longer because you, you say, well, someday if he ever gets his control, he's going to be outstanding, and uh, he looks like he has come along very quickly. He's ready to go, and the batter will be John Grubb. Johnny's 0 for 1. He bounced out, then he walked his last time up. Tigers have a runner at first with nobody out here in the sixth inning. Yankees lead it 5 1. And a strike. One strike to John Grubb. John Grubb has homered four times in his last 24 times at the, at the plate. And he pops this one foul and out of play. You see the runner at first base. That's Lance Parrish. And the two strike pitch to Grubb. He struck him out. He threw the fastball right by him. So Brian Fisher comes on on three straight pitches. He gets John Grubb. And the batter will be Chet Lemon, who's had a single tonight and two trips. Tigers have only four hits and one of those belongs to Chet. Here's a fly ball to center. Ricky Henderson moves in under it. So Lemon is out, sucking out of the inning. And the batter will be Nelson Simmons. <laughs> Yankees brought a hard throwing right hander in last night. That shut the Tigers down after they had bombed Phil Necro. Mike Armstrong gave up only one run. That was a home run by Whitaker. And really, they only hit two balls hard against Armstrong. Good pickup by Hassey. Armstrong was rumored earlier in the year in a possible trade, at least newspaper talk trade, for Daryl Evans. In fact, Billy Martin sent him down to Columbus. He was very upset with the young man. He looked impressive last night. Boy, you hate to give up on people like you say that can throw hard, and Armstrong throws hard. And he has a very unorthodox delivery, which would seem to make him tough on right handers. Here's a strike. Ball two, strike one. Runner at first, two outs, and the pitch to Simmons is hit on the ground to second, and Fisher gets out of the inning. We go to the bottom of the sixth. It's still the Yankees five and the Tigers one.
Live continues. Brought to you in part by Highland Superstores. Everything you never expected from an appliance store. By Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza delivers. By Ballpark Franks. They plump when you cook them. And by Ballpark Bologna. The only bologna good enough to be called Ballpark. And by your participating Snapper dealers. Here come the Yankees in the sixth inning. Bobby Meacham will lead it off, followed by Ricky Henderson and Ken Griffey. In Toronto, they're in the seventh inning, and it's still 1-0. Blue Jays over Boston. Milwaukee 2-0 over Baltimore in the fifth inning. Cleveland beat Oakland 7-2 in an afternoon game. Bobby Meacham has been to the plate twice and has flied to center field both times. Jack Marsh delivers. That's a good change of pace. One strike to Meacham. And the one strike pitch. It's high. One and one. Philadelphia got a run. Four three. St. Louis. They're still in the third inning. Cincinnati and Atlanta tied 2 2, playing in the ninth inning. Bobby goes to the fastball. One and two. Dodgers still 3 0 over Houston. They're in the fourth inning. Dodgers somewhat of a surprise over there. Nobody picked the Dodgers in spring training. They jumped off to a big lead. Everybody seemed to think uh, Padres would win it again. I thought they would. You know, after the year that they had, uh, looked like the class in the National League. But I would never forget. I'll never forget Tom Lasorda telling me he has the best pitching staff he's ever had since he's been with the Dodgers. Now he had Drysdale and Koufax and people like that. And he said he had the best pitching staff he's ever had. Three and two to Bobby Meacham. Leadoff man for the Yankees here in the sixth inning. And he walked him. Oh, well, Bobby Meacham is on with a walk. And the batter will be Ricky Henderson. We want to say a special thank you to all the people on our Tiger Network that made this television season possible. WNEM in Saginaw, WKZO in Kalamazoo, WILX in Lansing, WWTV in Cadillac, and WDIV in Detroit. Without you good people, we couldn't get it on the air. Ricky Henderson he's had a single and a double and here's one hit in the left deep grub going back and can't get it over his head Meacham will score and a two base hit Bobby Meacham was halfway to second by the time the ball got to the plate. He had second base stolen easily. Henderson drives it over the head of Grupp. In the score comes Meacham. It's a six to one ball game. And Sparky's going to buy a little time. He sends Tommy Brookins to the mound. Bill Shearer is throwing for the Tigers in the bullpen. He was up earlier, so it will not take. Uh, that long for him to get uh, ready. In fact, here comes Sparky Anderson out now. And he has signal, I think, for the left-hander. He has. Jack Morris has thrown a lot of innings, and it looks like it's not going to be his night. So they're going to try to save him a little bit. And Sparky wants to go to the left-handed pitcher. Well, well, there's a break in the action with the score of the Yankees six, the Tigers one. We'll pause for these messages. Bill Sher now comes in for the Detroit Tigers replacing Jack Morris. 
Makes the long walk in from the bullpen way out in uh, left center field. Scherer has a record of three and one this year. He has pitched 45 games in 45 games. And he has pitched 60 in the third innings, allowed 53 hits and 29 runs. A 4.03 earned run average. And with a couple of left-handers scheduled to bat, Griffey and Mattingly, uh, Sparky Anderson uh, goes to the bullpen. Jack Morris looked like he was going to have an outstanding night. He started off the ball game in great fashion, striking out the first two batters. And then Mattingly uh, got a base hit and came home on a shot hit by uh, Winfield in the gap in left center field. And then he struck out the catcher to strike out the side in the first inning. But he has not had an inning where he's set down the Yankees one, two, three. And he has left uh, six men on base in the five innings that he's pitched. So Bill Scher comes in to pitch for the Tigers. He'll be facing a left-hander, Ken Griffey, with a runner at second and nobody out. Bobby Meacham walked to start this inning. Ricky Henderson doubled to get him home. And now the left-hander Shear will pitch to the left-handed hitting Griffey. Griffey has struck out, walked, and tripled tonight. He scored a run and batted in one. Pitch is low to Griffey. Boy, they better keep an eye on Henderson. He almost took off on that pitch. And if he could guess when uh, Bill was throwing that slow curveball, he could steal it almost standing up. I'll tell you, if uh, Henderson had not hit the ball when Meacham was running a while ago, Meacham would have stole second standing up. I don't think Jack ever did see Meacham leave first base. And he was more than halfway down there when the ball got to the plate. Here's the one one pitch. Ball two ball two strike one. Toronto's got a new pitcher number thirty four. Of course you didn't figure Acker to go all the way. He is mostly a relief pitcher. There's a foul ball. Ball two and strike two. Say number 34. Number 34 for well, Toronto. He's not listed. It must be one of the new guys that he, they brought up in the minor leagues. Ball two, strike two. And the pitch from Bill Shear. He struck him out. He got the curve over. And Griffey strikes out. We're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're watching Tigers 85. Now for the latest in news, sports, and weather. Tune in to News 4 tonight at 11 o'clock right here on Channel 4. Don Mattingly, the batter. He's had a single, a double, and a bounce out. Mattingly has scored two and batted in two. One ball, no strikes. And the pitch from Shearer. That'll make it one and one. He got the big looping curveball over the inside corner. Not exactly where he wants it to this guy. Have you ever seen a more unorthodox batting stance with his feet facing backwards than the uh, Mattingly? No, you I would. Don't, I don't you, think he'll ever hit. You would think that he would. If he ever got his spikes caught in the ground, he would tear his knees yeah. apart. <laughs> his knees are. His, his feet are facing the catcher. Ball two strike one to Mattingly. And here's a drive hit down the line. Is it fair? It is fair ball. 
It hit the pole. He hit the foul pole for a home run. Well, this guy's just having another fantastic year. The American League batting champion a year ago. At 23 home runs, 110 RBIs, and now he has 31 home runs this year. Uh, we'll take a look at it again here. He was really guiding this one, and it hits the foul pole. Boom. A two run homer by Mattingly. It is 8 to 1, the Yankees. And the pitch is a strike to Winfield. Dave has had a double, a single, and a bounce out. Ball's going to be foul. Strike two to Winfield. Sixth inning at Yankee Stadium, and the Yankees have uh, come alive here on this Wednesday night. Tigers came in here last night beat them nine to one for the fifth straight time ninth out of eleven meetings this year and the Yankees seemingly saying enough is enough there's one to Baker long throw and he gets him so Winfield is out second out of the inning and it'll bring up Ron Hassey. Hassey's had a single tonight in three trips. This is the second time in the ball game the Yankees have put a three on the scoreboard. They got three in the third, and they picked up three here in the sixth. Bill Sher delivers and he fouls it away. As he looked like he might have been looking for the curveball and he got the fastball right in on him. Cardinals got two more and they lead the Phillies six to three. They can see some daylight if they win tonight. The Mets a loser in Chicago today. Cardinals if they win will be four ahead. Pitch is low and it's one and one. They're in the eighth inning in Toronto, one to nothing, the Blue Jays over Boston. Ball two, strike one to Hassey. They're in the sixth inning in Milwaukee, two nothing, Milwaukee over Baltimore. Ball hit on the ground to first. Easy play for Evans. They get three in the inning, and at the end of six, the Yankees eight and the Tigers one. Well, some travel arrangements for the television staff of Tigers 85 are made through Eastern Airlines. Now, whether you're traveling to Florida for business or pleasure, chances are Eastern has a convenient flight going your way. So come fly with Eastern. These two ball clubs will wrap up this three game series tomorrow night. Baltimore comes in here on Friday night for a long weekend four game series. But the old weatherman says the hurricane's going to hit the East Coast. Sometime on Friday, Al. Rather severe, they say. Yes. You better get out of here. Yeah, I hope I'm out of here by that time. But uh, Tigers have played very well against the American League East. In fact, they have beaten. Let's see, how am I going to phrase it? They have won more games against the American League East than anybody else. But the West have really done a job on the Tigers this year. Just the opposite from a year ago. Tommy Brookins takes a strike. It's going to be Brookins, Doug Baker, and Lou Whitaker for the Tigers in the seventh inning. Ball hit on the ground to Paliarulo. He 
throws him out and there's one away. We just got the official word on Joe Necro. He was forced to leave the game with a bruised right shin. And he got it honestly too. He was hit by a shot off the bat of Gibson. It'll bring up Baker who's had a single tonight in two trips. One strike to Doug. Boston has got two in the eighth inning and they lead Toronto two to one. New pitcher for Toronto is number 49. We'll check him out. Boston two. Toronto one in the eighth inning. That's Filer F I L E R. One ball two strikes. And the pitch. He struck him out. Ryan Fisher threw it right by him and Doug Baker strikes out. Well, Fisher's been walking right through the Tiger lineup. He has set down five in a row. So it'll be Lou Whitaker with two outs, nobody on. Lou is looking for his first hit tonight. He's 0 for 3. Lou fouls it away. He had a good rip at a fastball. Whitaker got his 21st home run of the year here last night. And a ball makes it one and one. Bruce Hurst is still pitching for Boston. Ball two. Ball two strike one. A couple of very important games on the West Coast. Chicago's at California. And Kansas City plays at Seattle. Lou fouls this one away. California and Kansas City have three games left against each other and they will be played in Kansas City. Here's a ground ball picked off by Mattingly and Whitaker's out. So another one two three inning for Fisher. We go to the bottom of the seventh. It's still eight one Yankees. Another new pitcher for the Detroit Tigers Bob Stoddard now pitching for the Tigers. Uh, Bob pitched for Seattle and was released. Uh, Purchased by the uh, picked up by the Detroit Tigers had a good year down at Nashville record there was uh, two and one with an excellent 0.58 earned run average uh, in Nashville he pitched in 22 games he had six saves it's 30 and two thirds innings allowed just 15 hits and three runs uh, so far with the Detroit Tigers he is uh, 0 and 0 has pitched in six games 11 innings allowed 13 hits and nine runs. A 6.55 earned run average. Sparky Anderson getting a chance to look at some of his uh, pitchers and see see exactly where the Tigers stand and uh, and in fact what what they need to improve on the standings uh, next season. So uh, this fellow has a good uh, good fastball slider and uh, a split finger pitch that has helped him considerably. When he was with Seattle, he never threw that pitch, but obviously is working for him. Pitching, Baylor will lead it off for the Yankees. Don Baylor, Mike Pagliarulo, and Rex Hudler will be the batters in the seventh inning. American League President Bobby Brown is at the ball game tonight, seated just past the Tiger dugout down the third baseline. Bob Fischel. Special assistant and aide to Lee McPhail is with him. One ball, no strikes to Baylor. Bob Stoddard delivers ball two. 
it's a final in Pittsburgh eight to the Pirates beat Montreal. There's a strike. Ball two strike one to Baylor and the pitch from Stoddard. This is going to be foul. They pitch Baylor inside and they get it far enough inside he pulls it foul. Then they like to go outside with it. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Outside, 3 and 2. Bob Stoddard trying to hit the outside corner and missed. Now he's got to come to Baylor. Ball 3, strike 2. And he pops it foul. This could be out of play. And it will be. This ballpark's a lot like Boston in that there is not much room between the foul line and the stands. This big guy's been a good offensive player for quite a few years. California, Baltimore, here at New York. He pops it up. Darrell Evans has a play on it at first base. Well, Baylor is out to start the seventh inning. And the batter will be Pagliarulo, who is 0 for 2. He's had a walk. The Yankees have eight runs on 11 hits, one error. The Tigers have one run on four hits and no errors. And the pitch to Pagliarulo. He loops it into center field, just out of the reach of Baker. Looks like he might have hit him on the fist and a low liner just over the head of Baker. And the batter will be the second baseman, Hudler. Rex is 0 for 3. There wasn't much reaction here in the stadium from this crowd of 17,010 when the Red Sox score went up that they'd scored two, which would indicate the Yankee fans have just about thrown in the towel. You had to get that 17,000 in there, didn't you? Well, I missed it by 10. About 17,000, and it was 17,010. Last night, 16,000 plus. There's a fly ball into center. Chet Lemon moves into right center, picks it up, and here's the throw back to first base, but Pali Rulo's back. That's the second out of the inning, and it'll bring up Bobby Meacham. Bobby's 0 for 2. He has a walk and has scored a run. Bobby Meacham, he has one home run this year. 44 runs batted in. We have another shortstop over here, Andre Robertson, who is a better offensive player than Meacham, but he doesn't have nearly the range as this young man does. Pitch is high, and it's ball two. Ball two, no strikes. They're in the tenth inning in Cincinnati. The Braves and the Reds are tied at two. Boy, with all the hullabaloo over Pete Rose breaking Ty Cobb's record, everybody forgets that the Reds have made a run at it. They've had a good year. At one time last week, they were only four and a half behind the Dodgers. Here's a strike. Ball three, strike one. 
The Blue Jays are batting in the eighth inning. Boston two, Toronto one. And he pops it high in the air. Parrish behind the plate has the room. And he puts it away. At the end of seven, the Yankees eight and the Tigers one. A uh, new pitcher for the uh, Yankees, number 47, Rod Scurry. This fellow was bought from the Pittsburgh Pirates. He has not pitched a lot. In fact, he's only pitched in two games for the uh, for the Yankees, only four and a third innings. Allowed three hits and two runs. He's always had a great arm, but uh, never knew exactly where the ball uh, was going. I've seen him pitch a lot of times down in uh, down in Florida. Uh, the Yankees obviously looking for some help. Going down the stretch, and uh, so far this fellow hasn't pitched all that well, but he does have a good arm. Brian Fisher had an outstanding job for the uh, Yankees, blanking the uh, Tigers in the sixth and seventh uh, inning with no problems whatsoever, striking out two, no hits. Darrell Evans will lead it off against Scurry, Evans, Gibson, and Parrish here in the eighth inning. Yankees eight, Tigers one. Tigers have only four hits tonight. They got two in the first inning off Necro, scored a run, and since then they have gathered only two singles. All four hits have been singles. Cincinnati in the eleventh inning with Atlanta, tied at two. Dodgers still lead four nothing there in the sixth inning. Pitch is high to Evans. Milwaukee leading Baltimore two nothing in the seventh inning. Ball two. Ball two no strikes. Even though the Tigers are down they might get Darrell Evans the hit sign here. He takes it. Ball two strike one. Minnesota three Texas one they're playing in the sixth inning. Darrell has a big rip at a fastball. Count goes even at two and two. And the pitch from Rod Scurry. He pops it high in the air down the line and left curving toward the seats and back in the crowd. Ball two and a strike two count. Look out. Three and two to Evans. Here's the payoff pitch. He struck him out. Darrell helped him out. He swung at a bad pitch. Darrell Evans strikes out to start the eighth inning, and the batter will be Gibson. At the end of eight in Toronto, Boston two and the Blue Jays one. Gibby is 0 for 2. He has a walk tonight. Curveball is over, one strike. Gibby hasn't had much luck. He hit a shot that was headed for center field. It hit Necro on the leg. He threw him out. He had a pop fly behind shortstop, and Meacham just made a whale of a play to catch it. So he's 0 for 2, and with a little luck, he could have two hits. The 2 1 pitch. That'll make it 2 and 2. Ball two, strike two to Gibson. We're in the eighth inning. One out, nobody on. Yankees lead eight to one. And he struck him out. Curve ball down and away, and Gibson strikes out. 
Second out in the eighth inning as we look at it again. Yeah, this ball's well out of the strike zone. Gibson looks obviously looking for the fastball. That'll bring up Parrish. Lance a single, bounced out and walked. Ball almost hit Lance Parrish. One ball, no strike. Scurry is the third Yankee pitcher. Necro started. He had to leave. He was hit on the leg with a drive off the bat of Gibson. He pitched a couple of more innings after that before leaving. Brian Fisher came on to pitch the sixth and seventh. He got six batters in a row, and now Scurry here in the eighth. And the 2 and 0 pitch. A strike. Got the breaking ball over. Ball two, strike one. And the pitch to Parrish. Ball three. Curry seems to be having trouble getting the breaking ball near the plate. Ball three, strike one. Here's a towering fly ball into right. Winfield backing up a few steps. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The Yankees eight and the Tigers one. Catcher for the Tigers as the Yankees come to bat in the eighth inning. Bob Melvin has gone in to replace Lance Parrish. And Ricky Henderson will lead it off. Ricky Henderson struck out to start the game. Since then, he's had a single, a double, and another double. He has scored three, batted in one, and takes a strike from Stoddard. Make it one and one to Ricky. The Cubs a winner today. They beat the Mets 5-4 in Chicago. Cardinals lead 6-3 over Philadelphia there in the fifth inning. San Diego playing host to the Giants. No score in the first inning. Dodgers four, Houston nothing there in the seventh. Atlanta two, Cincinnati two in the eleventh. One ball, two strikes to Henderson. This young man batting at 326 at the moment. Takes it low and it's two and two. In case you were not with us earlier, he set the all time Yankee base stealing record with 75. That'll make it three and two to Ricky. See that batting stance of, two to the leadoff man. The batting stance that he has, George, is a very difficult to pitch to. He bends well, well over at the waist. Doesn't have much of a strike zone. A three-two pitch. He walked him. Ricky Henderson gets a walk. Oh, well, the Yankees have the leadoff man on here in the eighth inning. And the batter will be Ken Griffey. And that's what makes this game so great Al there's no set way like golf they teach you stand here hold your hands here in position here if there were a set way you would have changed stand mutual a long time ago 
And how about Don Mattingly? I've never seen anybody stand like he does yeah. at home plate. One strike to Griffey. That'll make it one and one. Bottom of the eighth in Yankee Stadium. Yankees eight, the Tigers one. And the pitch to Griffey is high ball two. Ball two, strike one. He's had a triple and a walk tonight. Batted in a run. Scored a run, and he struck out twice. Here's a base hit. Gibby trying to cut it off. He does. Henderson's going to be waved in. Throw to the plate. Nope. They're going to hold it. A double for Griffey and a run batted in. Oh, this is just outstanding speed by Ricky Henderson. Uh, Gibson makes an excellent play here to cut the ball off. Looked like he was going to go all the way to the fence. Uh, Gibby just outruns the ball. It's an excellent play, but this fellow here, one of the fastest men in all of baseball. Gibby was going so fast, he had a hard time stopping and, and making the turn. Makes it a nine to one ball game, and the batter is Mattingly, who's had a home run, a single, and a double. There's the batting stance, very unorthodox. I've never seen anybody stand like that at home plate. One ball, one strike. He hit the foul pole with his home run. That was in the sixth inning. He singled up the middle. He doubled into the left field corner and takes it high. Ball two, strike one. Griffey is the runner at second with nobody out. And look out. Ooh, that went into the seats fast. I don't think it hit anybody, but you wonder how it could, how it missed him. I tell you, it almost took the chops off of those camera guys. It's two and two to Don Mattingly. Stoddard delivers. Here's a fly ball to left. That'll be caught by Grubb. Tagging is Griffey. He heads for third, and he'll go in safely. Mattingly is out. Griffey goes to third after the catch, and the batter will be Winfield. That's yeah, good base running by uh, Ken Griffey to go to third base. He looked like he was going to go, expecting the ball to go over Johnny Grubb's head. Goes back in a hurry to tag up. And I'll tell you, the, uh, the hitters appreciate this. Get a chance to drive a man in. Yeah, they do, but if I were Brookins at third base, I would just soon he stayed at second. They're going to have to play in close for this big guy, Winfield. And they're not in too close. He hits it on the ground to Evans. He'll come to the plate and save. Got in under the tag. We'll see it right here. Yeah, he gets in. Looked like he might be blocked off, but you see there he pushes the Bobby Melvin's foot back over the plate. Another look at it again. This ball was not hit hard. You can see there he slides it right on the plate and he gets it in. That's a run batted in for Winfield. <laughs> Sparky coming out to help Melvin, who was arguing the call at the plate, and Sparky just came out briefly to help him. 
Bob Melvin, I think, is saying he never did get to the plate. We'll bring up Ron Hassey. Ron takes it low. Ten to one, the Yankees lead it. We're in the eighth inning. And the one ball pitch. A strike makes it one and one. Milwaukee scored again. They lead Baltimore three nothing. Playing in the eighth inning in Milwaukee. Outside ball two. Ball two strike one. Yankees have 13 base hits good for 10 runs. And they've stranded a bunch of runners. Seven base runners stranded so far. It's been all New York here at the stadium tonight. Ball two and strike two. They're giving Winfield a lot of room. Evans playing well behind him. This one fouled away. Well, with a ten run, a ten to one lead, uh, there's not too many ball clubs unless you're trying to set some kind of a record stealing bases that will run because uh, they have to play again tomorrow. Hasse waits on the 2 2 pitch from Stoddard. That'll make it 3 and 2. Stoddard came on in the seventh inning. He allowed one hit, got out of that without any problems, but a walk to Henderson opened this inning, then a double by Griffey. Fly ball by Mattingly, and a ground ball got a run in. And it's 3 and 2 to Hasse. Three strike two. Atlanta scored two in the top of the eleventh. They lead the Reds four to two. Ball hit to Evans. He'll go to second. One out. Here's the relay. Double play. Good play by Stoddard who got there in time. They got a couple of runs and we go to the ninth inning. Yankees ten. The Tigers one. Now a new center fielder for the Yankees uh, Henderson getting an inning off here uh, Henry Cotto now playing center field for the Yankees and it looks like uh, Alex Sanchez is on the on deck circle so I would imagine he will bat for Johnny Grubb. Alex Sanchez will lead it off here in the ninth inning. Tigers down by a 10 1 score. Sanchez, Lemon, and Simmons will be the batters. Houston just scored four times and they're tied with the Dodgers 4 4. Here's Henry Cotta in center field. Rod Scurry is the pitcher and the pitch to Sanchez is outside. Toronto got a run in the ninth. They're tied at 2 2 and Toronto still batting. Alex fouls it away. The Blue Jays have rallied for one in the bottom of the night to tie it at two. Another foul ball. One ball, two strikes. Tigers have not had a base runner since Parrish walked in the sixth inning. Here's a strike. He got the breaking ball over. 
Sanchez is called out on strikes. That's three strikeouts for Scurry. He's not very consistent with this pitch, but when he does throw a good one, he has an outstanding curveball. Sometimes it doesn't break uh, all that well, but that was an excellent pitch. Chet Lemon, the batter, and a pitch high, one ball, no strikes. Chet's had a single tonight in three trips. Ball two. They're in the tenth inning in Toronto, tied at two. Ball three. Three and oh to Chester. Rod Scurry delivers, and he walked him. Oh, Chet Lemon is on with a walk. And the batter will be Nelson Simmons, who will be batting from the right side. Tigers have not had a base hit since Chet Lemon bounced a single to center field in the fourth inning. They've had three base runners since then, all on walks. Here's a strike. Nelly has 10 home runs, 32 runs batted in. And he pops it high in the air and back in the crowd. Top of the ninth at Yankee Stadium. Lemons at first, one out, and it's strike two to Simmons. Ooh, big sweeping curveball, and Nelly strikes out. Scurry has retired five batters, and four of those have struck out. And it's all up to Tommy Brookins. Tommy is 0 for 3. Fly to right, bounced a third twice. Curve is in the dirt. Two outs in the ninth inning. Rod Scurry trying to wrap it up for the Yankees. And a ball high makes it 2 and 0. Jack Morris started for the Tigers. He was followed by Shear and then Bob Stoddard. Ball three. Joe Necro started for the Yankees. He's the pitcher of record. Fisher came on in the sixth inning. Scurry in the eighth. And a strike to Brookins. Well, the way it stands at the moment, Necro would be the winner and Jack Morris the loser. Here's a strike. Three and two to Brookins. Kansas City and Seattle failed to score in the first inning. All three strike two. And the pitch. He walked him. Scurry threw him a curveball on the 3 2 pitch. Well, he has to be working on that curveball because, with a big lead like uh, he has, a nine run lead, there's no reason why they're, they're throwing breaking balls uh, at this stage of the game, particularly to a hitter like Tommy Brookins. So he must be definitely working on the breaking pitch. This is Barbaro Garbay coming on to bat for Doug Baker. Barbaro Garbe. And a pitch low. Scurry has been consistent this inning. He struck out two and he's walked two. Here's a strike. One ball, one strike to Barbaro. We haven't seen much of Garbe lately.
Barbaro helped him out with a curve down and in. One ball, two strikes. It's one and two to Garbay. Natives getting a little restless here in the Bronx. Pitch outside. Ball two and strike two. Barbaro waits on the 2 2 pitch. That'll make it three and two. Ball three, strike two with two outs means the runners will be moving. And the pitch from Scurry. He walked him. Well, the bases are loaded. All on walks here in the ninth inning. He threw him a 3 2 curveball. Unless he's working on it, as you say, doesn't seem to be any reason to throw it 3 and 2 with a nine run lead. If I were an everyday player, like many of these Yankees are, uh, I'd be a little upset with the pitcher. <laughs> They've had to play a lot of innings. Larry Herndon the batter Larry coming on to bat for Whitaker base is loaded two outs and Rod Scurry having trouble getting the ball over the plate here in the ninth inning there's one way outside and Billy Martin is talking to Mon Bouquet and here comes Billy Mon Bouquet out to the mound. Well, had Scurry been able to close this out, pitching to Brookins, I would have said he'd had a good outing. He had struck out four of the five batters he had retired. But he's walked three here in the ninth. Well, this is a drive a manager crazy when you have this kind of a, a lead and, and a pitching coach. But he's always been very inconsistent. Uh, all the years he was with Pittsburgh, uh, he would have some good outings and all of a sudden just the complete opposite. He always had trouble with his control. There's nobody throwing in the bullpen. They're going to go with him, I guess. Now there's some stirring out there. They're answering the telephone. Ball three. Three and to Herndon. Ball three, no strikes. He doesn't have anywhere to put him. Three and one to Larry. Billy Mambu Kit. Lou Pinella. He walked him. That is the fourth walk this inning. It forces in a run. And it's a ten to two ball game. Neil Allen now getting up and throwing in the Yankee bullpen. I would think that Daryl Evans might jump all over this pitch. He's trying to win the home run championship. Oh, he took it. One ball, no strikes to Evans. Base is loaded, two outs with a run in. And he gets it over. One ball, one strike. Ball two, ball two, strike one. Billy Martin looking on. Evans hits it foul down the first baseline. It'll make it two and two. Rod Scurry gets ready and the pitch to Darrell Evans. He struck him out. He got the curveball over and Darrell Evans caught looking. 
Final score of the game, the Yankees 10, the Tigers 2, and we'll be right back.